Hey guys and welcome to this video in which I'm going to go over the summary of the warning signs of God. Since the start of the 2014 blood moons which were made famous by John Hagee and discovered by Mark Wiltz, there have been eight signs. The book which John Hagee wrote, The Four Blood Moons, was released in 2013 and it was a bestseller on Amazon for 21 weeks. And in that book, he said that something was about to change, but obviously John Hagee couldn't have known what was about to change. And I believe that perhaps he probably still doesn't know what the signs were warning us of and why they happened at that time. So blood moons are typically a sign for the Jews as they work off of the Hebrew lunar calendar. Solar eclipses are for the Gentiles as they work off of the solar calendar. You'll remember that uh, when Jonah went to Nineveh, they all repented because a solar eclipse had just happened or happened as Jonah arrived and the whole of the Gentile nation of Nineveh repented, uh, much to the dismay of uh, Jonah who didn't want them to repent because he, he thought that they were a wicked nation. But uh, they all repented because of the solar eclipse which, solar eclipse which happened then. So in this video, uh, we need to be specific about uh, what constitutes a sign. Uh, we can't uh, assume that a, uh, a supermoon, which isn't blood red, constitutes a sign because that's not something which is given to us or, or mentioned as a sign in the Bible. So what it needs to be is a visible and total solar eclipse. So it needs to be visible and people need to see it. It can't be somewhere that's obscure like in the Arctic or out uh, in the oceans. And the nation which the sign is seen by is the nation being warned. Alternatively, uh, it needs to be a visible and total lunar eclipse. So it can't be a partial lunar eclipse where uh, only the, the moon partially passes through the uh, penumbra or the earth shadow. It has to, be, it has to go through the, um, the, the, the penumbra uh, perfectly and, and be a total blood moon. Uh, and the nation which the sign is seen by is the nation being warned. And then the third sign is uh, a, a sign in which the technical workings are described in detail by the Bible, interpreted by the Holy Spirit, and fulfilled by the movements of the planets with their associated meanings amongst the background of the constellations with their Christian gospel interpretations. And that's obviously the Revelation chapter 12 sign as we know it. And when reading Genesis chapter 49, the blessings of Jacob uh, that he gave to his uh, sons, to the sons of Israel, Bible scholars who do not incorporate the uh, constellations will refer to the blessings as obscure and puzzling. They're cryptic and they don't make any sense. But the blessings are not puzzling uh, or cryptic. Uh, they're decrypted by applying the zodiac to them. The timing of the signs. Why 2014? Why, why did the blood moons start in 2014? In Luke 17, Jesus Christ uses the days of Noah and Lot to warn us of the end times in which perversion will be accepted as completely normal. And Jesus alludes to marriage being a part of that. That is homosexual marriage. The first miracle that Jesus performed was at uh, the, the wedding in, in Cana. Uh, it was a, a very um, uh, specific message that, that Jesus was getting across to us about marriage and the importance of marriage. Paul tells us that the whole reason why God created marriage was kept a mystery from the beginning of the foundation of the world. And Paul reveals that mystery to us. And the mystery, of course, is the church being married to Christ. In Isaiah 24 verses 3, the land shall be utterly emptied and utterly spoiled, for the Lord hath spoken his word. Isaiah 24 is a, is a description of the end of the world and, um, and the wrath of God coming upon this world, the entire world being burned and turned upside down. It says, the earth mourneth and fadeth away, the world languisheth and fadeth away, the haughty people, the proud, the haughty people of the earth do languish. The earth is also defiled under the inhabitants thereof because, and it gives us three reasons. First is they have transgressed the laws, which we have always done. We have always transgressed the laws. But the next two reasons come in very short order of each other. And 
it has taken nigh on 6,000 years for us to come to those last two reasons. The second reason is that we have changed the ordinance. We have changed the, the fundamentals of those laws. We have not just transgressed the laws. We've, we've not just broken them, but we've actually changed the fundamentals of those laws. And of course, uh, that that is things like uh, abortion, uh, gay marriage, assisted suicide, and all those kinds of things. And then the third is uh, broken the everlasting covenant. So number two and number three are going to come in very, very quick successions of one another because changing the ordinances and, and the actual laws themselves, what that means is when, when Roe versus Wade happens, and uh, the uh, I think it's something like 100 million babies now have been... Um, uh, have been aborted, that, um, that is the changing of the ordinance of God. Now, as, as horrific and, and terrible as abortion is, please understand that I'm not downplaying abortion. The, the, the aborted baby goes to heaven. The, the, the soul of that baby goes directly to heaven. The, the, the difference is with homosexual marriage is that, um, is that we are now educating our, our children and society now accepts homosexual marriage as legal and normal and that sends people to hell so the difference the major difference between uh, the changing of the ordinances which happened with abortion and with uh, with marriage is that one sends uh, the uh, sends people to hell and and the other um, doesn't so the changing of the ordinances happened and started to happen, obviously, when, when Israel came back with the abortion uh, uh, law. And But the, the, the real kicker is, is homosexual marriage. And then, obviously, the breaking of the everlasting covenant is the dividing of the land of Israel, recognizing a lie on God's land of Israel and recognizing a Palestinian state. And that is the breaking of the everlasting covenant. So those, those two things, homosexual marriage, and the breaking of the everlasting covenant are going to come very, very close in very, very close succession to one another. And, and that's exactly what's happened. And then, of course, it goes on to say, Therefore hath the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and there are few men left. And so the beginning of the signs of God in 2014. 2014 was the crossover point for same-sex marriage in what was traditional Western Christendom. In 2014, England and Wales legalized same-sex marriage. And in 2014, the number of states in the United States went from the, the minority of states to the majority of the states. In 2015, the U.S. legalized same-sex marriage nationwide. And as the signs began in 2014, and I believe will end in 2018, God has given us five years of grace. So on this website, procon.org, uh, here we can see the exact cutover where it happened. So uh, in red are all the states which uh, had banned same-sex marriage, and in green are the states which uh, permitted same-sex marriage. And the crossover point came uh, in exactly 2014, and uh, in 2015 is when everything was legalized. And here on the New York Times in this article, this was October the 7th. Uh, this was one day before the second blood moon. Uh, we can see that uh, it goes on to say at the bottom, with Monday's Supreme Court decision and Tuesday's ruling in San Francisco, the number of states authorizing same-sex marriage, which was 19 last week and 24 as of Monday, is likely to approach 35 in the coming weeks as the legal aftermath of the four appeals court decisions issued to date plays out. So 2014 was the crossover point and that's when the signs began. Here you can see an image uh, in red are the states which allowed marriage at the end of 2013. And on the right hand side are the number of states which allowed marriage at the end of 2014. This is another image in 2014 which shows very clearly the number of states went from the minority to the majority. And uh, obviously uh, we know that uh, America is the head of the Gentile nations. Uh, this world is Mystery Babylon. That, uh, that John spoke of the whole world is, is Mystery Babylon. That's why when uh, Nimrod came to, to build Babel, uh, when all the people came together to speak a universal language, we have a universal language. We speak it over the internet, and the underlying language of that universal language is called the binary. Uh, binary is the, uh, are the um, oscillations of the digital zeros to ones, ons and offs, light and darkness. 
and uh, uh, Satan is the prince of the power of the air. He masquerades as an angel of light, and he is not light. He is obviously darkness. So that is the global language that we speak. And here you can see in 2014, this is when uh, the, the, the scales started to tilt, and this is when the signs began to happen. Here's another uh, um, picture which depicts the opinion of people uh, who say that uh, same-sex marriage should be valid in, in dark green and uh, same-sex marriage should not be valid. So as you can see, uh, there was a crossover point uh, which came drastically at the, uh, the uh, second term of Obama and it just went downhill from there. So you can see the opinion changing course here before the uh, the legalization came and uh, once one state was uh, legalized it was just a snowball once the precedent had been set in romans chapter one paul tells us that the judgment of god upon a nation that forgets him is homosexuality and perversion he says in verse 21 because that when they knew god they glorified him not as god neither were thankful but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like unto corruptible man and to birds and to four-footed beasts and creeping things. And we can see the uh, prevalence of idolatry which has uh, crept into this world. Um, he says in verse 24, Wherefore, or therefore, because they forgot God, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up to vile affections for even their woman did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also men, leaving the natural use of women, burned in their lusts towards one another, men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was met. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things with which are, which are not convenient. So, a nation that forgets God is handed over to homosexuality and perversion, and that is a very accurate barometer as to the time that we're living in and exactly why the sign started in 2014. So some of the other major prophetic events which have happened since the blood moons in 2014 and this uh, warning period that we've been given. We saw the Iranian nuclear deal worth $150 billion uh, thanks to Barack Obama and his, uh, his uh, wicked um, administration uh, strengthening the Iranian army and uh, giving them uh, more confidence to move against Israel. Uh, Iranian and Russian intervention in Syria setting up for the Gog Magog showdown. We saw the migration crisis uh, begin to happen in 2015. In Isaiah 28 it says that uh, the bed is shorter than a man can fit in. It talks about waves of, of, uh, of uh, scourge coming into, uh, into, the, uh, into Europe and to the places that are that are doing this to Israel and uh, that it's a, it's a report which is unpleasant to hear the news of this migration every day by day, night by night, evening by evening this is happening and that's, that is the migration crisis. We see a wicked and deceiving um, Pope. Uh, he's a religious heretic and a politically corrupt proponent of communism. Uh, he's a wolf in sheep's clothing and likely the false prophet mentioned in the book of Revelation. We saw the United Nations Security Council Resolution 2334, uh, which says that Israel's settlement activity constitutes a flagrant violation of international law and has no legal validity. So the, the United Nations, uh, which is the, the, the League of Nations, the, the gathering of all the nations together, say that Israel is, uh, is irrelevant. And we saw UNESCO on multiple occasions denying Israel's claim to Jerusalem and rejecting Jewish history associated with the Temple, Temple Mount. So they, they prefer the fictitious lies of uh, Islam and proclaim that there is no Jewish history in Jerusalem. And the UN Human Rights Council, uh, we've seen them condemn Israel more times than all other countries combined while atrocities like Syria and Yemen and uh, all the other uh, places around the world where these terrible things are happening go unspoken of and unaddressed. 
And we see the recognition of Jerusalem as Israel's capital by Donald Trump. We saw that is probably a major, major uh, prophetic event. But not forgetting that the United Nations General Assembly Resolution ES10L.22 is a United Nations emergency session resolution declaring the status of Jerusalem as Israel's capital as null and void. That's 128 countries said that to nine. So although a lot of people um, uh, were, were glad about what, what Donald Trump did, and it is a major prophetic sign, uh, the United Nations, effectively the world has uh, completely nullified it. But for, for us who are watching the signs, it's, it's obviously very important. And last but not least, uh, a peace deal which uh, which recognizes a Palestinian state on the Holy Land of God is uh, is now being um, uh, negotiated, and that was very shortly after the Revelation chapter twelve sign, as, as you'll see. So the first blood moon was on Monday, April the fifteenth, twenty fourteen. This was a total blood moon that fell on the Lord's Day of Passover. This was visible to the United States. It was not visible to Israel. It was a warning to the capital of the Gentiles, that's the United States, who are watching the signs and Israel. This happened in the constellation of Virgo, the Virgin. And we know that Virgo is associated with Israel because the Bible tells us that's in Revelation chapter 12. The second sign, uh, the second blood moon happened on Wednesday, October the 8th, 2014. This was a total blood moon that fell on the Lord's Day of Sukkot. This was visible to the United States. It was not visible to Israel. It is a warning to the capital of the Gentiles who are watching the signs and Israel. It's a warning to the United States who are watching the signs. So in this book, which is uh, the Star Laws and Their Meanings by Richard Hickey Allen, uh, this is the one that I got. Uh, I ordered this from Los Angeles. And this uh, the card came with a written tulku, which is the holy altar right in the uh, the the page which is Libra and uh, the, the 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 constellation of Libra, and this card was taken out in 1984. That's when I was five years old. Is when this card was put into this book and and was there until I opened it. But what he says here is that um, in in the constellation of Pisces, uh, the fish, uh, there was a uh, a triple conjunction. What's actually called the major conjunction. Um, and that took place when Jupiter and Saturn conjuncted in 7 BC, uh, which was also the year 747 of Rome. This was three years before the birth of Christ. And he says here, within their boundaries took place the three distinct conjunctions of Jupiter and Saturn, the year to which for a long time was assigned Christ's birth. Uh, and it says that the, the opinion is that these appearances guided the Magi in their visit to Judea. Uh, and uh, that was by Johannes Kepler, the famous astronomer. It says that it is noticeable that the rabbis held the tradition recorded by Abarbanel, who was a very famous rab rabbinical scribe in the 15th century, that a similar conjunction took place in Pisces, the three years prior to the birth of Moses, and they anticipated another at the Messiah's advent. And of course, that happened in the constellation of Pisces. So we know Pisces is about Israel. Thus, the fish were considered the national constellation of the Jews as well as a tribal symbol. So we know that Virgo and Pisces are the constellations attributed to Israel specifically as a nation. The next date we see is Saturday, April the 4th, 2015. This was a total blood moon that fell on the Lord's Day of Passover. It was visible to the United States. It was not visible to Israel. This is a warning to the capital of the Gentiles who are watching the signs and Israel. So here we see three of the blood moons, which were visible not to Israel, but to the United States. And then the fourth and the final blood moon took place on Monday, September the 28th, 2015. This was a total blood moon that fell on the Lord's Day of Passover, visible to the United States and visible to Israel. It was a warning to the Gentiles and Israel. And this took place in the constellation of Pisces. So here you see Virgo Pisces, Virgo Pisces, where these where these uh, blood moons on the Lord's Day of Passover took place. This is clearly telling us about Israel, and I believe that the natural branch is about to be grafted back in, and the uh, the wild branch is about to be separated. And the conclusion of this is God's focus is changing back to Israel, and as you can see by the uh, the where the signs were uh, located and also 
uh, who, who it was visible to. And the final one being visible to Israel and to the U.S. is saying, guys, this is coming now. You better open your eyes and you better start paying attention. So just taking a closer look at the blood moons here, we can see the first one uh, had Mars in the vicinity. This is the beginning of the warnings. The penumbria and the blood moon can be seen just over here by the uh, by the waist of Virgo. And uh, you can see that this was uh, just over America, not over Israel. And uh, in the second one, we see that the penumbria is by the fish, which is going backwards along the ecliptic. Uh, there are two fish, one is going upwards and one is going backwards. And I'm just going to go over something about that just now. Uh, and on the right, you can see over here, this was the United States and this was not Israel. The third blood moon, uh, the, the uh, uh, penumbria was in Virgo. So we see Virgo, Pisces, Virgo. This is all about Israel. And on the right, you can see that the lunar eclipse happened over the United States and not over Israel. And on the fourth and final one here, we see the uh, the penumbria and the lunar eclipse again happening on the fish, which is going backwards. And on the right hand side, we can see that it was North and South America, Africa, Europe and Israel and the Middle East, which this lunar eclipse was visible to. So just regarding uh, the fish, which is going backwards and the fish, which is going upwards, this is from E.W. Bullinger's book, The Witness in the Stars. And he says the fish shooting upwards to the polar star exquisitely pictures this heavenly calling. While the other fish keeping on a horizontal line answers to those who are content with an earthly portion. So one fish is going upwards and one fish is going backwards. And we know that Jesus said to the disciples that I will make you fishes of men. And obviously fish are uh, associated with people. So could this be that the fish which are going backwards where the lunar eclipse happened are the representation of people who are not going to be raptured because uh, that's where it occurred on both occasions. And the fish which is going upwards is the representation of the people who are going to be raptured. So we had four major signs in 2014 and 2015 and then we didn't have any signs in 2016 which is interesting because that's the third year and obviously there were three in the Trinity. And in the fourth year, which was 2017, we had the Great American Eclipse and the Revelation chapter 12 sign. So sign number five took place on Monday, the 21st of August, the Great American Eclipse. This was only visible to the United States. Uh, it cut the United States in half. It was 33 days before the Revelation chapter 12 sign. It started in the 33rd state of Oregon and it ended in South Carolina on the 33rd degree parallel north of the equator. This was a warning to the Gentiles and it took place in Leo, the lion of the tribe of Judah. So the solar eclipse uh, had Mars in the vicinity. Uh, the solar eclipse took place in the constellation of Leo, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Uh, it's a warning to the Gentiles uh, that the lion of the tribe of Judah is coming. It took place right over the king star Regulus, which is, uh, in, uh, which is where the Jupiter was when the Magi sign happened. This is uh, darkness which was portrayed on uh, America and it's a warning sign that uh, the judgment of God is coming. Between the August eclipse and the Revelation chapter 12 sign, as soon as we saw the August eclipse, very shortly after that Jared Kushner headed to the Middle East uh, to start his uh, peace plan and uh, the discussions with them in the Middle East. And uh, we saw uh, five hurricanes in short succession straight after that. And 2017, the Atlantic hurricane season, it says, was a hyperactive and catastrophic hurricane season with a total damage of at least 282 billion US dollars. It was the costliest season on record, su surpassing previous record holder of 2005. So not only do, did we see the signs, uh, not only did we... Uh, view the solar eclipse and the Revelation chapter 12 sign in uh, 2017, but God gave us five hurricanes in short succession of one another um, and, uh, and uh, broke all records with regards to uh, these hurricanes. So we can see uh, they started to build up um, on August the 2nd, there's a category 2, uh, then on August the 13th you see a category 4, uh, and uh, on August the 25th, straight after the uh, solar eclipse, we saw the Category 5, which was Hurricane Irma. 
and uh, on August the 31st, uh, Category 4. So God's making it very, very clear, guys. Uh, if, I hope that you can see that putting this all together, it's, it's absolutely clear that, uh, that he's telling us that, uh, that the time is coming and we need to be ready. And then came the greatest sign of all, which was sign number six, the number of a man, the Revelation chapter 12 sign. This was not visible with the human eye. Human society is now technologically advanced enough to foresee it coming. Made known on YouTube and other media, it was absolutely unique and falling the day after Rosh Hashanah, right before Israel turns 70 years old. So in God's foreknowledge, he would have known that what was in Revelation chapter 12 could have been visible by anybody who had a computer and could download free software and see this for themselves. So God foresaw technology and he saw, foresaw the ability for all those who are watching for him to be able to go and have a look at that sign. And that was sign number six. And of course, then there's the Revelation chapter 12 sign, which I don't need to go into. Uh, anybody watching this video will know about the sign and the fascinating things that surrounded it. Uh, I'm still in awe of the sign. I just think it's just so awesome. Um, I love God and what he's done with the works of his hands with the sign is just incredible. Um, and probably even a little bit nostalgic about it even. Uh, uh, looking back uh, is such a blessing and uh, what an honor it was to have seen this sign coming and uh, to have watched it happen. And I think that any, any, anybody watching this video will agree how blessed we were to see this. And uh, we, we give thanks to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and the host of heavenly armies. And we can't wait to see you, Lord Jesus. So then coming into 2018, uh, the 2018 blood moons, I believe are referencing the 2014 uh, and 2015 blood moons. These are the, the bookends, if you will, uh, and the final closure of the signs. I believe that 2018 is going to be the year of the rapture of the church. Uh, sign number seven was on January the 31st, 2018. This was a super blue blood moon. Uh, it was the third in the series of super moons. Uh, but we don't consider those as signs because uh, obviously they're, they're not mentioned in the Bible. But nevertheless, it was special because of that. It was the third series of these uh, super moons. Uh, there were two full moons in a single month, which made it a blue moon. And it was visible to the United States, not visible to Israel. And it is a warning to the capital of the Gentiles who are watching the signs in Israel. Interestingly, this took place in the sign of cancer, which is the crab. And the crab is associated with cattle folds. The, uh, the two deacons are Ursa Minor and Ursa Major, which are the cattle folds. And the name of the crab, uh, it actually means who holds or binds uh, or the cattle folds to bind together. The brightest star in Cancer is called Tegmin, which is in the head. And uh, the star means sheltering or the hiding place. So in uh, in E.W. Ballinger, he says, here we come to the completion of his works. In Cancer, we see his reference to his redeemed. And the three constellations, these three constellations, that's Cancer together with Ursa Minor and Ursa Major. What is now called Ursa Major, the lesser flock, Ursa Major gives the sheepfold and the sheep with travelers and pilgrims brought safely home over all the conflict. So this is happening in the crab. So in Francis Rolleston's book, The Matzro, she lists the name of uh, cancer, which is called Sartan, or who holds or binds. And uh, the, in, in the Coptic, it's the cattle fields, holding, encircling, the possession. Uh, the names in the sign is the multitude, the sheltering, the hiding place, the assembled, the assembled thousands. Uh, all these things make it clear what this cancer is saying. It's about the redeemed and it's about the cattle fold it's about the gathering together so uh, this is a sign that the rapture of the church is about to happen and that is the sign number seven so the eighth and what i believe is the final sign friday the 27th of july 2018 this is the, a total blood moon this is the longest blood moon of the century that's from the year 2000 to 2100 Mars will be the closest it has been since 2003 and, and before 2003 it had never been as close until 2003 since the beginning of creation um, and you'll remember that in 2003 was when the Iraq war began and uh, all this trouble started so there is also a dust storm accompanying Mars and making it appear much brighter in the sky 
This sign is taking place in the sign of Capricorn. Capricorn is the sacrificial sign. Uh, it's the sign which has a goat which is being slain. It's in a vulnerable position um, and it's, it's just about to be sacrificed and it has a, a tail full of vitality coming out of the other side of it. So from death comes life. Uh, it's also a sign which represents life and death. And just like Joshua said, choose you this day who you will serve. Uh, you either choose life or you choose death. And that's exactly the sign where this, uh, this blood moon is taking place in the sky. So those are the eight signs, guys. Um, I look forward to the sign to see what's going to happen. Uh, this sign is uh, appearing over Israel only. Uh, the, the sign is not visible from the United States. So this is a warning to Israel. So one of the things I noticed as I was putting these dates together was a hidden pattern in the days. So if you recall, uh, the four blood moons, we had Monday, April the 15th, 2014, Wednesday, October the 8th, 2014, Saturday, April the 4th, 2015, Monday, September 28th, 2015. Those were the four blood moons, so I put a separator there. Then we had the uh, August eclipse on Monday the 21st. We had the Revelation chapter 12 sign on Saturday the, the uh, 23rd of September. And uh, we had the first blood moon uh, of this year on Wednesday, January 31st of 2018. And then we've got this blood moon coming up on Friday, July the 27th. So I took those days and the numbers of those days. So the first day in, uh, in the Hebrew calendar is, is obviously uh, Sunday. That's the first day. Monday is uh, the second day. Tuesday is the third day and so forth. So if we look at this uh, pattern here, we see... Two, four, seven, two. So those were the patterns for the blood moons, and then we see it in the reverse order. Two, seven, four. So you can see it's it's backwards from uh, from from the blood moons. But the funny thing is, for the up and coming blood moon, it's not two. It goes to six. So I found that very interesting that uh, there seems to be a, a pattern there. I mean, there's, there are no Tuesdays, uh, there are no uh, Thursdays, and there are no Sundays. So it's, uh, it's very interesting that these have all fallen on these particular days, and there's this particular pattern here. And, and I'm not sure why that is or what it means, but uh, I do find it very interesting. So if you consider this blood moon being the sixth in the series of blood moons, remember we had two in uh, 2014, two in 2015, then the one at the beginning of the year, this is number six. It's also happening on the sixth day, and it's happening in the sixth constellation. If you count from Virgo and you include Ophiuchus, that's Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Ophiuchus, Sagittarius, and then... Capricorn, so it's happening in the sixth constellation. So I have a theory about the ninth of Av because I I think that Rosh Hashanah potentially the reason why it, uh, it I just think about it was because the. Um, Rosh Hashanah in the past has been something which is a celebratory uh, occasion. It's something which is a, a happy occasion. It's blowing the trumpet on on the uh, on on the new moon, on the new year, on the on the coronation of a king. So it's a very happy occasion. The new, it's something that's new. So obviously, um, I am aware that uh, the the Rosh Hashanah date is a very big date, but I am interested in the ninth of Av just because of the. The things which have happened on that day and how bad it has been for the Jewish people. Uh, in, in history, in the ninth of Av, uh, we see here the spies returned with a bad report and then they were banished, obviously, to the wilderness for 40 years. Both holy temples were destroyed. So uh, Solomon's temple and Zerubbabel's temple, uh, which was upgraded by Herod, Herod later. The Battle of uh, Betar was lost. That was when Simon Bar, Bar Kokhba uh, led the revolt and uh, he lost against the Romans. That was on the 9th of Av as well. And then very shortly after that, um, that was when the, the, the Romans actually plowed uh, through the Temple Mount and it, uh, it disappeared completely. So um, we also see that 
the Jews were expelled from England on the 9th of Av. The Jews were banished from Spain on the 9th of Av. Both world wars began on the 9th of Av. So I'm very interested to see the 9th of Av as a, as a potential date for the rapture of the church. Um, obviously, I'm a, I'm a date setter. I set dates, uh, and it's a policy of mine. I set rapture dates so that uh, so that we we can uh, look forward to those dates and then and then be sorely disappointed, and we can all fall away from the faith and not believe in God anymore. Have you ever heard anything so ridiculous as that? I mean, come on, people! If you want to believe in the rapture of the church, let's set dates. Let's look forward to dates. I want to set. Tell me, give me a good date. If if you've got a good enough reason for tomorrow that the rapture is going to happen tomorrow, I'll believe in that date and hope on that date. So when these people all say, oh, don't set rapture dates, don't set rapture dates, please give me a break. Like, please give me a rapture date that I can look forward to. So the 9th of Av is the one I'm looking forward to, obviously, because that one's coming first. Then uh, the blood moon, obviously, on the day itself that the blood moon happens. And then after the blood moon, uh, obviously, Rosh Hashanah. So we shall see, and hopefully, uh, it'll be one of them, and we will be out of here very soon. So I love you guys. I hope you enjoyed this session and God bless you and see you in the sky.